Hello, you meet me in a live debugging session of this little tool. This is some C sharp that I'm written to back up my home engine. The engine's currently in a state where I can load and manipulate models, I can set lighting conditions, I can move cameras around, spawn cameras, I can spawn spotlights, and uh, I can do global illumination. So what I'm doing next is thinking about an actual terrain system. And what this little piece of C-sharp does is it gives me a way of creating a chunk. A chunk is just one terrain mesh. And it has a, a size, which I'm keeping square, though I don't have to. I've written this such that it will edit itself. It takes a seed to the uh, generator, the noise generator. And I have coloured sizes. So water is below a certain threshold, sand, and then temperate, which is just greenery and then rock levels. And I can then say how many cells are actually in a width and height of the world. The world itself must always be square. So if I said 10 cells, that would be uh, 10 by 10, so 100 cells. What I'm actually doing first is just checking single generate. So what a single generate does is give you one piece of Perlin noise-like ground. So this is the colored version oh sorry this is the gray version let's set the color to say uh, 80 for water 90 for sand 200 for temperate uh, and then above that for say 210 for rock generate that exact same thing this should just flick the color so we can see lows are water the greys are rock, so you see the high points and the low points, we can see this, the water and such and so forth. Um, if I actually make water higher, you get the effect of uh, islands in, in the noise. But this is basically an open, what I hope to be an open field exploration. And the great thing is that these the actual cells are tiled so that they do fit. So if I do... Uh, let's do two by two which gives us four cells this single should be duplicated with the one by one you can actually just skip it so yeah so zero and single look identical to me I hope they do to you too so that's zero and that's single and they pretty much look identical they are identical yeah and this is zero. So if we move right, so if we look at this left hand top, you can see it's got like a stretched over the border. If we go back, this is the bulbous piece over the border of sand. So you can see it's it's sort of matched. We can then see a bit of rock, bit of sand, bit of water and sand. So we get sand, bit of rock, bit of sand, bit of water and sand. Exactly the same. It's a seamless piece and these are hopefully going to be interest points as we go around the world so the wider the caps of the mountains and we can sort of see things off now I do plan on flattening this out some this is a very basic generation uh, and likewise if we go down we can sort of see we can see this so we've got from left to right sand and water sand and water if we go down we've got sand and water sand and water it's interesting how they span over like this. But as we uh, move around the world, it will need to stream these blocks in. Now, whether an 800 by 800 mesh is realistic for my ground, I don't know. I don't know if this represents meters, 800 meters by 800 meters, or if this means some other subdivision, whether this is centimeters, so this is um eight meters by eight meters seems a bit unrealistic so meters looks a bit more likely for this scale and we can go from there um but what i've just been trying to do and what i'm live debugging is a is a problem with memory that i parallelize i can't say that word parallelize the generation i actually send out um a thread with the job for each cell and then each cell comes back and writes itself out and that's why 
I got four images out of here. So if let's delete these five. We don't need the single or the ones we've just done. Oh, still got, oh no, it's not because I've still got them open. It's that they are in use by the app. So let's just close the app. Let's delete them all. And let's start things up fresh. I don't care about the color right now. So we can just try and do 10 by 10, which is 100 cells. That's a serious number of cells. So effectively, that would be 8 kilometers. If this is meters, it would be an 8 kilometer by 8 kilometer space. Now, this isn't the most powerful laptop ever, obviously. And I am, there we go. There's the first tranche of eight. So I've got eight cores. It's doing eights. We're at 77 meg. So this looks like the memory issues have already gone away for me on my last edit. And it seems to be... Uh, my annoying the C sharp virtual machine with images. Yeah, so with nine by nine, so some of us are finishing off. These should all be seamless. We'll let them see if they're seamless when they come back. It's easier to tell if something is seamless when we get color. With black and white, it's quite difficult. There's nine by four. Still not got all the eights, they've still got not all. There we go, there's a whole bunch of eights coming in. That was that was nine five. Eight five nine five. Six by six took its time. Nine by six is in. Nine by seven. We're still not breaking the memory, which is good. Because I want to set this up and let it run and produce me 20,000 cells. I've got, a, I've got a server. That's where it will go. There we go. We're done. This thinks we've done 9 by 9. Now, this looks a bit blurry to me. I don't know why it looks blurry, but we'll see. So we've got light, dark light. So light, dark, light, light, dark, light. It does look like it would fit. So I'm just switching my eye to look. This is zero, zero. I'm looking at this pattern down the right, and then I'm looking at this pattern down the left. This is supposed to be, or could potentially be, a working multi-state thing now let's do that again with some color um, but first I'm gonna switch to single mode and let's just work on I want maybe an island effect lots of water and islands so let's raise the water level to 180 let's make it for 10 for the sand 220 250 for white the tips Generate me the one. That's given me islands. That's given me quite interesting islands, to be honest. Let's just make them a little bit more rocky. So let's make this 200. Let's make this 240. Generate again. That's not done a lot, has it? It's just made these mountains here a bit bigger uh, let's do 220 see what that does nothing so I'm really looking at 180 there uh, 190 oh sand level 190 that can't be lower than that okay so two hundred and this one's got to be say 210 just to sort that out that didn't make a big difference did it so let's do 170 180 
240, 244. That's, that has changed, it's brought up things here, so uh, I guess that wasn't refreshing in the viewer a little bit. Let's, so lower, lowering the water levels brought this tiny island into being in the middle and brought this, this couple up here in the middle. Let's put that back up to 80. Let's make the sand level 185, just a sliver of sand. Uh, maybe, I don't know, I don't know how much sand I want. Do I want long, effectively long, shallow beaches or do I want abrupt, sharp edges? The only way I'm going to know that is by generating some and putting them in the engine, which is a whole other kettle of fish that I want to deal with later. Well, tonight really. That has regenerated. Mm hmm. Hmm. Let me try ninety one nine five two thirty two forty. Generate again. Yeah, so the sand has definitely got smaller doing that. These islands have disappeared by one pixel. As you can actually see, but there's one pixel on the left there. Um, this island has dramatically changed shape. I quite like the causeway in that. So I'm going to go 185 and see what I get. hasn't reloaded that time it does reload sometimes obviously so there we go I get that spit of land at 185 but I get a bit more on that thing up there just a plain sand island is interesting if you're thinking about it that could be quite interesting for my gameplay they could be where you find rare silicates or something So let's just try and lower the sand level a bit more closely. So that's left the sand islands as they were. But I've got a touch of green on that one now. A bit more green on these. I quite like green as the main thing. That's an, that's an island with some sort of mount now in the centre. So let me change that to 200 and let's see what it does to this hourglass shaped island. That's made them all have almost like a mountainous overtopper now being so close. So let's raise that up a little bit more. That's a bit better. That's a little bit better. Let me do two five and see what I get then. Yeah, it's too, there's not enough there. Uh, I'm, I'm torn. I'm torn. So I'm going to stick with those settings. So let's actually write those down. In fact, I'll make a note that I want to save some of these settings. So what I've got is 185, 190, 225, 240. And if you can't guess already, they're the the heights on the y-axis for this um, and let's do 10 cells and generate so all these cells will change color as the images change and it outputs and you can see on that chart on the right hand side my CPU is quite busy it does seem kind of random which files get processed first it should be row then column so it doing ones 
one by naught by one, one by naught, etc., etc., seems correct. It's marching through them vertically almost in this view. So I'd expect 0, 4, 1, 4, and 2, 4 to come next. There you go. And now to loop 0, 5, 1, 5, 1, 6 to match my cores on this machine. Let me just see. This isn't even a release build, so it's fairly slow. And I'm recording. But yeah, the CPU is very busy doing this generation for me. And one of the other things I wanted to do was where we're at the edge of the map, I want to clean off. So, so this is the top. This actually goes on this right hand side. It would go to the next tile. So I want to clean off the top and left of this one. So that would be these, these and this whereas on naught one i only want to clean off the top but the top includes this being connected to it that's the challenging piece that does intersect with the top i had to clear it off so there's naught naught we can see the piece of that island crosses over it's the only thing that crosses over and if we keep going right we see this little piece this sort of wedge and that's the only thing that crosses over we can see a little bit of sand appearing on the next. That's the rest of that sand. In fact, that's a high peak look. There's that. Nothing crosses. Oh, no, there was something crossing there. That tiny lip of that one crossed over there. Over and over and over and over. Oh, that's an interesting one. I like that. So these are my islands. And this will form the basis of my play space. And I will go from here to convert these into terrain tile meshes. Whether I'm going to be editing the data that's saved and saving a binary data or keeping these as images, I don't know. Um, it would be interesting to just have the vertex colors from this map to influence whatever textures I put over the top. That would be interesting. But we shall see. Just looking for anything interesting, that's it. Interesting peak. That's an, that was an interesting shape, I like that one. They have this sort of amoeba-like shape to them. There's two pillars or mirrors. That's an interesting big peak at the very south of number eight. A pair of peaks at one one. There's actually four larger islands on that map, but only two on this one. That's an interesting paw shape. You've got the pad and then a paw. That could make an interesting defensive position, that one. That would be a very strong defensive position if you could hold all these islands in some way. People couldn't come at you. Three by three, long, thin one. I was, saying, I was just interested what the bottom half of that little amoeba looked like, and it was just a stub. Interesting. So yeah, there we go. I thought I'd show you that as a, a little piece of where I'm at with the home engine and what I'm up to. Obviously this is all done in C Sharp, not C++, because it's just easier for me to wrap my head around and play about in the GUI, in Windows and Output, um, output Images. And the noise library I used was Fast Noise by Jordan Peck. So you can get hold of that online. Bye-bye.